I'm getting the correct date. Uh, July 24th. Second. Oh. Okay. Um, any, there are three of us, so yeah. we should still be able to. So, any comments or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstentions. Okay, Rebecca, thank you. Um, right now, I would like a motion to open up a public hearing to update local law number two of 2020 regulating the water district. Rebecca, second. Mark. Okay, uh, this uh, public hearing is now open to uh, the local law number two updates regulating the water district. Uh, there were a number of updates and corrections. Uh, I reformatted it as well. <laughs> so, um, Mark or Ed, do you have any highlights that you would like to share with regards to the updating of the water law? Okay. Um, I, I think the biggest, well, one of the biggest change after clarifying some issues, um, whatever the, uh, where we had dollars for figures, um, Ed, we're going with, um, just, just slipped my mind, not prevailing wage, but market rate, market market rate. rate. yes. Right. So instead of trying to keep up with inflation, market rate will take precedent over everything else. Okay. And there for uh, activation requests, they will be uh, completed between uh, Monday and Friday during normal business hours and weekend activations or deactivations will be additionally charged and increased cost for service because our people do need to come in and then that's time and a half for that. Um, 48 hours in advance uh, is required. Um, meter updates. Yeah, they're mostly just things that were out of date. Yeah, yeah okay. nice pipes, things like that. Yep, no lead pipes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, any comment from people online or in the uh, office here? Okay, hearing none, I will uh, take a motion to close this public hearing on local law, the updates to local law. Oh, yes. Um, my comment is I still think we should have the uh, meter at the roadside, not inside of the law. I agree, but I don't think that's feasible right now. <laughs> Unless the village does it for the homeowners or some kind of deal like that, I just don't see the homeowners doing it. Plus, you can't even get them. The meter pits are like eight months to get right now. So that's, we have a serious supply issue. Right now. So as we are replacing meters, they're still being replaced in the home. Right. Not through not through meter pits. And all new construction are meters, meter right. pits. The only thing that I had recommended in the past was like because we do new construction needs them. If you have to repair your service line or replace any section of it, a meter pit should be installed. That's what I would do in the future if we do decide to move forward with that. But for now, I, I don't think it's a viable, a viable option. So you can't get the parts. Wow. Unfortunately. And okay. for some reason, the village did some for some people back in the day and not for others. I don't know. Is that, that a service? Is that a service we can provide? To install them? No. no. Okay. The cost is tremendous. Okay. The All last right. time we checked, which was over a year ago, a meter pit was $800. They probably pushing 12 now. Okay. Plus, it's, you know, having a contractor come in and do the dig, and then if you're replacing the whole service line of the house, you're looking at probably $5,000. Okay. Depending on how far it is and all that. Stuff. Yeah. I don't, I don't think and I, I always think. make the recommendation to homeowners when they have issues like, oh, why does it cost so much to take the meter in and out? I say, well, you could put a meter pit in. Yeah. But nobody ever does it. So I always make the recommendation. Okay. Okay, we need to up our in and out price. <laughs> we, 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 we did. We did. We just did. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other comments? Can I ask you a question? Uh, yes, if you say who you are. Chris, you're okay. uh, I 
one or two properties here. I, did I just understand that new construction would be required to install a meter pit? Correct. But if the meter pits aren't available and to get parts for them is difficult, people I would that hold up the construction of a new building? It could, but generally he lets me know when plans are in the works for building something and I let the homeowner know well in advance prior to building them that they are um, um, my only concern is, is that it can hold up the the CO or getting the water to the building and get parts on the building. Well, we, we would work something out where we could do it without temporarily or something. Okay. If that was the case, but I wouldn't say no, you can't have water because you can't get a meter pit. You know, we, we would figure something out. Okay. We would, yeah. and, and the purpose of the meter pit is simply to provide better access to the water department to remove and install meters at the request of the property. Correct. And it also eliminates having to pull it in and out for seasons. So it can be there year round, so you, you no longer have to put it in and out. Thank you for the fire. Good. All right. I got Who are you? The absence of having a pet meter or meter pet, whatever you want to call it, if you read your job by the sidewalk or road to the side or whatever. If you have a leak between there and your house, it's on your dime because you run into through the meat. If you have to meet from inside the house, it's on the village each time because there's no way to know how much work. Well, we, we do have a lot of push in place to counteract that. Correct. There are fees point. for being for letting it go. There's a certain amount of time they're allowed to get it, let it go. But I mean, if it's something you don't know about, that's true. It would take on the village time. So if you have a, a pet meter, it, they, you catch it quicker. So. And it's on the tax credit, but as far as making somebody who already has a meter inside your house put in a pet meter, which all the prices of the water system and everything today, you're going to break the beat to the village. And you keep putting all this stuff on the difference between the house meter and the $800,000 pet meter. You know, it make or break some of the people in town who are on fixed income. Yeah, we're not man we're not mandating at this period of time. Yes. Okay. Uh not hearing any more uh questions, I'd like a motion to close the public meeting. Okay, Cindy and, and Mark. Uh public hearing is closed. So at this time, um, I would like us to vote, or I would like a motion to take a vote on approving the changes and updates to local law number two of 2020 uh, regulating water district. May I have a motion? Mark. Mark, second. Cindy. Um, all in favor of accepting the changes and updates to local law number two of uh, 2020 regulating water district say aye. Uh, all opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Trustee Smith abstains. All right. So at this point, I would like to go on with uh, Ed Sharpo for the water wastewater uh, report, as well as going through the sewer planning with respect to uh, grant loans and our impact on rates. Okay, I'm going to start with my monthly report, and then I'll transition into that. Um, uh, do you want to post the report online? I don't. I don't have the electronic. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't think I have it. Open. All right. Okay. Go ahead. It should be straightforward. Yeah. Okay. As we know, water meters have been in the, in the village, and all the bills have been sent out. There's only been a couple of concerns that have been raised, and we've responded to those. Um, for operations, there was a leak in the wall complex. Uh, two weeks ago, starting on the 27th, they got a text message uh, that had been prepared. It was surface off the main that had broken all the plastic fittings. Uh, 
it's temporary fixed, but temporarily fixed because we will be replacing that section in the fall. Okay. Uh, Thursday, the 3rd of August, pop number one at the well building failed to start. Uh, thinking it was a fluke, we let it go and attempted to have it start again on the 4th, and it failed again. This was uh, on a Friday, so on Monday, I placed a call in the aquaculogist and hawk drilling to try to troubleshoot the problem on my own. Um, based on the test that I had done, the soft start was fine, um, but I am not an electrician, but based on what I've seen, something is going on from soft start to motor and pump, either wires or motor itself. Um, Hawk is coming on Wednesday to do tests. They have actually sent me an estimate for replacement of the motor and pulling the pump uh, for 13 745.32. That is if the motor is needed. I was very surprised when they called me today and said they actually got one from their distributor and would be bringing it in case it was needed. Let's hope it's not and it's just a wire issue. They still have to pull the pump to do the wires and all that and find the issue. Uh, but they'll do their initial test to determine if the motor's bad or the wires are bad. They may have to pull it anyway, but I'm not really sure. So nothing could be, you know, I, I love electrical storms. There's nothing that can be tied to any electrical well, so storm. Thursday night was the night that the house on Oakland Drive was right. struck by lightning. Right. So we will, once I know what's going on, we will we'll probably put in a claim with the insurance okay. um, to see if they'll cover it. They did cover the burnt wires last year that were fixed on the same pump. So, but that all looks fine. They pulled the head off the, the actual casing, the wires at the top of the, the well look fine. So, I'm just hoping for the best at that point. At this point, we do have money budgeted for the transfer switch at twenty thousand dollars. So, in the event that the insurance does not cover it. I will probably use that money, money temporarily because having a well is more important than a transfer having switch. a transfer switch because we can still transfer that power manually if need be. Um, that will help us budgeting-wise for the year. So that is my plan, but once I know more, I will let you guys know. And that includes um, just having them come as $1,500, $300 an hour, they call it a mobilization fee. It's the same for all of them. Mm -hmm. And as you all know, when we did this, I had received quotes from multiple well drillers, and they were the cheapest mm -hmm. by far. So obviously it's an emergency, so that's not necessary, but they're still cheaper than most. Um, we're still checking chlorine and phosphate throughout the system. We're installing meters as we go through the village. It's kind of slowed down a little bit since a while we've been bringing more calls and we've been dying on more throughout the day. Um, the water tank's been pressure washed and cleaned as per request by DOH. We still have to dig it on the back and add stone. So we're going to pull the vegetation out around the back of the tank and add stone. If we can get to it this year, I hope. And disinfection byproducts and electric copper tank taking the week of the 21st, so not this week, but the following. And as for projects, we're still waiting on FEMA for the so change, and um, we're also waiting for, the, for them to hopefully approve the scope of the change, or the painted scope work, which would move the, what we're going to have done to the other side of the road that was going to be completed. I, I personally think that is the better option, but yep. we'll see what they say. And then we have resubmitted the WIA grant that was uh, due on July 28th. Correct. We'll hopefully get that button. As for the wastewater department, um, the panel for pump station number three has been ordered. I did receive another quote from Aquologics, and it was significantly higher. I will include that with the PL which said panel when it arrives. It's been Three weeks since I ordered it, maybe a month, and I haven't heard anything so except the fly issues. Um, the smells at the wastewater plant have su subsided and are significantly better. Have the, you done anything different? Um, 
increased our, our electric bill. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So you're increasing the oxygenation? Yes. Yeah. So in order for you to reduce smell, you won't get rid of it completely. You want it to be anywhere between a 0.5 and 1 for dissolved oxygen. We were running pretty close to that 0.5 once they ran some tests. pH was fine. So we ramped that up quite a bit, and now it's running more at one. So okay. we basically doubled the output of the, the blower, which will increase the electric Um Slack Chemical has come and done another jar test. They've done this three times for me in the last four years. We're having some issues with our biosolids. A lot of it has to do with the fact that our planet is an aerated biosolid system, not a, yeah, the opposite of that. Um, they tend to see a lot of problems when you have aerated biosolids. Basically, we're having to add more polymer than we sh we were expecting to add, so we have to decant and try again here in another week or so. Hopefully, it was waiting for the bays to dry out. If, if it takes that long, we we run into problems, and to haul it away, liquid is quite a bit of money. So. Um, and then the drying beds, we patched the drying beds because as part of my five-year plan, I don't know if you guys recall, for 2024 and 25, I do intend to re resurface those. Uh, probably Charlie King will do that if you'd like to. We did it last time. Um, it's just a coarser, it's like a base material they put on the roads without the top, so it allows liquid to drain yeah. through. I don't remember how much it was, but it I don't think it matters because prices are now way different. Yeah. They were so we'll send them out to bid anyway. Well, it's less than the day. Is less it less than, than three? Uh, I, I think we need bids less than three. I mean, anything more than three. 20 grand per bid. We, we, may, we may need. No, it's, it's less than 20. Okay. Yeah. It, it's less than 20 that we need to send out bids for. Okay. Um, so we'll all do that. It's for yep. next year. And then the land application site has been is getting prepped for application. Okay. I'm hoping to do that in the second or third week or something. And then as for our projects, which I'll go into more here in a minute, we still have the FEMA project for Pump Station 2. That's uh, work is tentatively scheduled for September, but it still needs to be approved by Jason prior to the start. The disinfection grant, that has once again been uh, Applied for by on July 28th, if that's the QID funds. That it is a based on need, it's 25% to 75%. Brendan is pretty sure we'll get the 75% because they're requiring us to have it without notice per se. Plus, if we don't do it, we'll go into non compliance and then they would give us the 75 uh, as for the generator grant, we will probably apply for the brick grant program around September again. And then you possibly may have something else in the works. We don't know quite yet. Um, and then the EPG grant for uh, sewer extensions. So this is engineering planning grant. This basically just gives us monies for the engineers to write a, write a, uh, write a plan for that. This would include Route 8 extension, which has been talked about in the past, but now we are also including South Shore Road to the village limits. Uh, the last number I got for that was uh, very high, like $21 million or something like yeah. that. It's going to be crazy expensive, but we'll see what happens. Right. It's worth looking into it, at least. And how are we with the survey? Uh, I have not. Uh, we have not done that survey yet. Okay, so if we can do that before the, if we can at least send it out before the next uh, board meeting. Uh, survey to the homeowners? Uh, do surveys to the homeowners that don't have to worry here in the North Wales. Oh. Uh, their wants and needs mm -hmm. before they pay the run. I forgot what we're doing, so. Right. All right, so I'm going to move on to the discussion we had previously had about possibly taking more money from the grant that we've already received. As you all know, we 
actually were awarded up to $2.4 million with 25% grant. We only took $1.5 million, so there is still money available, and we still do have projects um, that need to be done. And that fall was under, that fall under that grant? Yes. That so would be it, it basically just grant. an addendum to the existing, uh, uh, the existing engineering plan. And then we, we could move forward with any one of these projects or multiple. Um, the reason I we're doing this is because, for one, we have to see what's going to cost the taxpayers, if more or less. And we also, um, it's, it's very hard to get a grant after you've already received one up to five years later, which this one technically was received in 2017, so we are eligible again soon. However, I would not count on it. And any grant we do get moving forward will still be 25% grant. So I do have. We already have one that so I have a question. There, there uh, was a comment out that the village speculator was awarded a SAM grant for the wastewater treatment plant. We were it was only five hundred thousand dollars, and that was used in the existing project. But we have not yet been the current project. Yes. Right. So why why isn't it at why isn't it in the it's numbers a, though? It's Dazzin grant. Oh. Yeah, Dazzny is the same thing as the same grind. Okay. All right. So that is just just for concern. Um, there was a bill in the New York State House and Senate to eliminate uh, grants that had been awarded and still not paid out for a number of years, and this would have been one of them that was not uh, approved. So there are still funds available to pay us out the um, the SAM grant. Yes. And Brennan is, is working on that, right. I think he's working on it. Uh, he's working on it as of today. Oh, he's not. Yeah. He's, had, he's working out a lot. Of he is. So, Work back uh, up. So yeah. I'm just going to move into this. Basically what we've done is we've done a breakdown. We're going to start with what we have existing, which is the $1.5 million project on the left. As you can see, 1.5, the SAM grant, the EFC project cost is less than the Adley grant. Um, the 25% is the 250, so we were responsible for 750, and then the closing costs um, were 138, and it brought the annual loan payment to 35. This is what's already existing where we are right now. Right. So the original project was 2.1 million. We opted at the time to only take 1.5 million. Okay. So when we all come down to it, the loans that we are responsible for are 13,800, that's a lot of zeros after that. That's the... Closing costs, I'm sorry. Yeah. Those are the closing costs. So we have the 750,000 plus the 13,800 for an annual loan payment of $35,833. That's doing nothing more. That's if we stop Which is basically right here. being covered by the original loan that we, that's been paid off since 2016. So that, that was covered, basically. But right now, where that leaves us is without any increases to base rates or any increases to, to user fees at all, we will be in a deficit within six years. If we were to, and what we've done, what was recommended to us by Brandon is, well, if inflation is up 3% every year, why are your rates not going up 3% every year? Right. Yeah. So overall, track yeah. So overall, when we look back at the history of uh, water and wastewater, uh, we ran into the village ran into some trouble a while back, what ten years now or so, where the general fund was offsetting payments for the water and the wastewater. That was corrected through uh, New York State Office of the State Controller um, audit. Um, that bill, all those monies have been paid back. So. As we all know, the rule is water pays for water, sewer pays for sewer. So since that time, we ran into some issues about five years ago where we were in a deficit and we slowly increased base rates over a three-year period of time. And I think our total increase was $5 a quarter for uh, water and $8 for sewer. I think overall, I think that that's right. So we have done that. So there have been no, 
So there have been no increases to base rates since that time. There have been no increases to water rates for well over a decade, maybe even 15 years. So when we look at how can we do this equitably across the, across the board, what we did do is with the last base rate increase, we included 3,000 gallons uh, usage. So that really doesn't offset much at all. Basically what I was told is, I don't really know why you have a usage fee because most of the year nobody's there. Right, because we have so many second homeowners. So if we do any increases moving forward, they should be two base rates. But if it's all right, I'll keep moving forward. Yes. I just want to make sure everybody had the, the background on that. Yeah. So and right now, our, our current base rate, the way it is, years of deficit would be six years. If we increase that to 3%, which we have as inflation on average moving forward, obviously right now it's like 10%. Um, if we did a 3% increase every year to the base rate, that would be about... Um, it's $13.50 a year, it's $3.30 a quarter more moving forward if we did it per year. $3.30. And we have added, as requested by Jeanette, uh, the 2% and 1% increase you can see here on the charts. But a 3% gives us 17 years at our current uh, loan and, and all that moving forward. What I'm requesting is that we take more, obviously, because it's available to us now, and the likelihood of us getting any anytime soon is slim, plus it'll be the same as we already had. So what, what I've done here is I've broken down these project costs for 800000 which is the max we can pay more, $750,000, and two fifty. Um, and the reason we have those breakdowns is because if we go down below that, we have the additional projects that should be considered. The I and I work, which we've discussed, which can technically be applied for a whole different grant will be for but 25%. The generator, I don't know where we're going with that. It's kind of, we're still up in the air. And then we have the metal replacement, the outside plant. That is something that should be prioritized because there is really no other funding available for that grant-wise. I got a quote for uh, a cost estimate of about $400,000 to replace the metal. Um, we could technically repair it, but it'll probably just bring another leak the following year. I take pictures of people that might be seeing when it's empty. Um, what I've done here is this is going to get kind of confusing. But anyways, you can see the cost estimates for those three projects. And then we have other projects, which are FEMA, the pump station, which is ongoing and supposed to start in September. And then we have the disinfection. This is all going to come back to what we have to for unreserved fund balance, which is what this 20% is here. Basically, what we could do, in theory, is take 20% of each of these cost estimates and pull it from our fund balance to reduce the cost of that project. So if we were to do that, each one of these, uh, I and I would go to 160, generator would be 200, and the metal would be 320. For a total of 680,000. Everybody clear on that? Yeah. OK. We've done this fact sheet, because if we brought up the 30-year plan and everything, we would have been real. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, we have the FEMA and disinfection projects. I want to start right there for a second because the FEMA project is four hundred fifty thousand dollars, which we're only responsible for twelve and a half percent of. So we're only paying fifty six thousand five hundred twenty dollars of that. And then the disinfection product or uh, project is two hundred eighty three thousand dollars, which that would be seventy five percent covered. So we should only be paying seventy thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Those two projects right there should automatically come out of our user fund balance. If there's no reason to apply for loans for those, I don't think that's where part of that money should go. So that'd be $127,000 out of the 259 that you have available in the user fund balance. So without those two projects, and we're beyond that now, um, that leaves us the way it is. 297. 
that would be the total for our unreserved fund balance, but we only have 259, so we're about 17,000 short. So we would have 13,000 or $132,000 left for those two other projects once we paid those out from the unreserved fund balance. If we only took those two projects. Yes, if we only took those two projects. To FEMA and it. Those, I do not see any reason for us to do apply for one two. Once we've received those grants, we just pay it out of the unreserved. There's no reason to apply. That's why we have the unreserved, because we've been saving that for yeah. these projects. So that leaves us how much for the existing projects? So the existing product, the existing three, which I have the additional projects to be considered, to be included in the, the project that we have existing now, are the metal replacement, the generator, and the I, &I work. Priority is definitely metal replacement because I can't run the plant with only one plant, right? Or with mm -hmm. only one tank. There's no reason to do the I with the plant properly. So that is priority mostly because of funding. That's three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's if we did twenty percent out of unreserved fund balance, that would be eighty thousand. That would bring us down to if we did everything, seventy thousand left in unreserved fund balance. If we put twenty percent towards it, if not, it would be four hundred thousand. And obviously, we have a two fifty to five. Basically, what I'm going to go to, to now, we can always talk about this more later, is crystal and my recommendations. Three percent increase per year for three dollars and twenty. Three dollars and thirty cents a quarter, with an additional project cost of five hundred thousand. So I'm not maxing out what we can take, even though I personally think we should take it all out. Um, to include the metal replacement, twenty percent of I and I and metal to be paid out of un, um, okay. un unreserved fund balance if we choose to do so, we don't necessarily need to. And then the other projects and loan amounts to be paid out of the unreserved fund balance, those are the payment and disinfection. And then the remaining, if any, of the unreserved fund balance will be put into uh, property capital reserve projects and divided equally between, Christopher and divided equally between equipment and capital. This leaves us with the generator still not being so in our capital fund for uh, equipment, things like that, in the wastewater treatment plant, how much is in that fund right now? Capital? 20 and 64. equipment. And Only 64,000. 64 in, well, which one? Capital reserve or equipment? Capital. Cap capital is 64. Yep, that's capital. And can that be applied to the generator? Yes, because it's yeah. a project. And for equipment, does it fall? Seven. It's not a lot. 17, but that would also fall. Yeah, but they need a, they're going to need a tractor. Equipment is more for uh, vehicles and stuff. Yeah, okay. That's why we said that. You guys set that one up uh, yeah, four years, years ago. ago. So if I... I know this is kind of confusing. You guys can all just kind of, if you have questions, or I'll find your email on me and we can discuss it more. Um, but uh, basically, so let me go back to the deficit in years with the rate increases. With a yeah. three percent increase, if we were to do the five hundred thousand, then and with a three percent increase that would give us ten years before we were at a deficit. With two percent. Three percent. Two percent would be six years and one percent would be four years. If we did the five. I personally think we should take the eight, but I think we should take it all because it's already ours in a sense, you know what I mean? What is the percent rate? Four. What is the rate that we're paying on the loan? I, it's in this calculation. It's right there. 2.5% for subsidized rate. That's what Brendan's calculation That's a heck of a lot better than what we can yeah. do elsewhere. So, all right, my next question is, um, are we able to use any of the capital fund balance to offset the loan each year? I'd rather not. It doesn't... No, no, I'm just asking. I'm just putting out all the questions. We've thrown some ideas around about using these unreserved fund balances to uh, reduce the rate increases and all these things, and most people tell us it's not a good idea. You should use the unreserved 
Fund for the projects themselves. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying anything about the unreserved. We should. We do need to use the unreserved, unreserved fund balance. Absolutely, positively, we need to. We need to spend that. Yes. So, um, with with rates currently at 2.5 percent for the loan, we would do better taking the loan and investing anything and using that interest, that added interest, to pay down the. That we're going into recession. Brendan did mention to me today you can always pay extra on your own if you choose to do so. Mm -hmm. I don't remember why you told me that. Thing. Well, when you pay down the principal, your interest is going to shrink. Correct. Which is Unless your principal will always good. Right. Right. So that's kind of where we're at. We did the fact be obviously because it was still confusing, but not as confusing <laughs> as the other option. Um, yeah, that's our idea. Since we're um, saying we're not going to do the generators, what kind of position are we in with our current generators? It still works until it doesn't. Are you referring to the one that's on wheels? This no, is, no, that's not the one. Uh, it's actually in the building. The new one is a huge one outside and no longer be inside. It's a very loud. And what, yes. what's the one on wheels? The green one is our, uh, it's a 30. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's four, well, it's four pump station four on LA Road and pump station five, but it's also going to be for pump station two now. So in the past, when we had no power pump station two, we had to pump that manually to bring a pump down and set a bunch of hoses. Now I can just drag that generator down there once the project's done and plug that in into the job. That's, that's, that's the plan. So. Okay. So my, my comment on all of this is that if we if we look at the unreserved fund balance to pay down twenty percent of the I and I work and to pay down twenty percent of the metal replacement, that costs us, you know, taking away from the unreserved balance. Yeah, it's a hundred and twenty thousand plus the one hundred and twenty seven thousand for the FEMA pump station and the disinfection. Um, that leaves us with two forty seven. And we did this with one twelve. Yeah. About seven. This year, none of us is having our arms are found out. No, no, no. I understand that, but that deficit of seventeen thousand that we can't pay for, ideally, if we threw the generator in there, we could take that from the capital. Right, so we would reduce the capital by seventeen thousand. So we could actually do it all and not worry about the Personally, generator. No. I would recommend that capital reserve money that's been put in stays there for any projects moving forward that come. If that goes to zero, then we no longer have any. No, no, I, it's not going to go to zero. It would go to fifty. Yeah, forty-seven, almost fifty. I thought we were going to assume the whole cost of the generator through the current contract. I mean, that was yeah. agreed upon. We were going to do that originally, but then the metal in the tank was yeah. came right. might be an issue. We want to do I and I work. Brendan said, "Why don't you just use the existing project money? Did you have money available?" So we've kind of been back and forth. So is it? Yeah. yeah. So it is still open for us to do so. So, so is it? Is it possible not trying to rob Peter to pay another year? Well, now it's like ten months. Right. So there is. So there is a, a. Okay, there's a remote possibility of a grant coming for the generator. A remote possibility, so that even if we paid for it under these project costs, we could apply that grant money to. If we, get it. if we get it right, so so that's a remote possibility. That generator has been on its last leg for. We're also applying for that brick grant again. Yep. September. And I have some comments. I, have, I have some comments and thoughts. No, no, no. But I've got. Well, I haven't disclosed anything, so I do have some thoughts and comments about the grants that we have have applied for. So I I agree with Mark that I think we need to include the generator in there, and I think if I do the calculations correctly, it falls somewhere between 500000 and 750000 
if we did everything using 20% less from the unreserved. Right. It's a 680. So if we went for the 680, that would use all of our um, fund balance plus 17,000 from our capital. So our capital fund would then be sitting at 47,000, which is still a reasonable. But we still have to take 16 more. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. So that 60, 680 in loan is somewhere between the 500 and the 750. Right. So instead of going 750, I would propose that we go. Included in here is engineering costs. So these are just the project themselves for Brendan told me it's negligible compared to the project so well what are they what engineering would we need for the i and i work replacing 20 manholes getting a generator which size has already been compensated and replacing the metal it's got to have a package for them that's the engineering work you know it's usually 21 percent of the total value of the contract um that's what they get i don't know if it's still the same it wouldn't be that for us because we've been I just wanted to mention that if we, if we took the 750 because of the 680, it would it would be good. Right. Yeah, we need to get a cost from Brendan. Yes. It's All not right. Going. Well, then it then it looks like we would have to take closer to the 750 thousand dollar loan. Right. Yeah. And at 750, with a three percent increase every year, we six years would be. Back to Based on our calculations, there are things that change, like inflation, and we can use twice as much water when covering it. So, still better than work. <laughs> when do we have to decide? Uh, I would like a decision by the next board meeting so we can move forward with Brendan and all the paperwork that needs to be done. We probably have to increase our bond because we only did it to 1.5. Correct? Uh, we have so, a ban out right now for yeah. 950000 Yeah, where we did a bond for... We did a bond for one and a half. Project. Right. I think it was only one and a half, so we'll probably have to increase that. So there's some things we have to... There's some additional costs. costs. Well, maybe not the next quarter meeting, but my next quarter meeting. We'll give you guys a month. Okay, that's a month. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions, Fred? And if we lose the generator, I think we'll be okay. Huh. We can figure out another way to without including it. If our, we have the brick grant program and the, uh, whatever you got in the worst possible. What I would like to know is what would what would happen if we included um, more water in the base rate? So if so, right now we include three thousand gallons per quarter in the base rate. Yeah, the usage base. The reason that's set up the way it is is because we were trying to make it more fair and equal. Correct. That's that's what I'm saying. So if we. Our seasonal, season, right. seasonal, right? And generally, our our non-seasonal people only use about three thousand a quarter. Some use less than that. Some use more. Yeah. But that's why we have that number. Yeah. I, I, so I was just wondering if there was any, you know, it'd be minimal. Like if you did four thousand, it's five thousand ten cents more per customer. I'm just looking. I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah. looking at other other avenues to make it more palatable because. Twelve dollars, twelve dollars a year. You know, you think, well, that's you know, a cup of coffee, you know, a couple of cups of coffee. Um, but still, just trying to make it. It's it's just not going to be palatable, no matter what we do. Um, and how are we? For the interest of yeah. both, what we have as assets right. and, and the public. And how are we with regards to water base rate? Uh, we did not. We did not delve into that. We did primarily sewer for now. Well, I know we have our thirty year. Set, we can delve into that again. Well, I'd like to look at them together. Um, that would be more of a thirty year plan. And also so, in our in our thirty year plan, going with what Brendan just did, if we're doing if we're in, figuring out inflation, like going by mm -hmm. inflation rates, figuring three percent in every year. 
for our expenses, we should be doing that for our increase. Water. Right. So it's less than this. Sewer is more money than water. I, so yeah. it's three dollars and thirty cents a quarter for sewer. It's probably going to be more like two dollars and ten cents for water. So that's yeah, just me throwing a number out there. Okay, so um, for next, if we can provide for the next board meeting, and I realize that you won't be here, you know, that's not your monthly board meeting. If you would please provide what we're looking at for water. You just and, want to know the 3% increase to the base rate, what that's going to be important. And, and how our payments are going, because I know we, we are paying off a, a water loan, like when that loan kicks in, you know, when that drops off, you know, that water bond. Um, like I said, a million dollars. I know. It's 2030. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, a million and one, thank you very much. And then the sewer is just so that we can have some numbers that we're looking at it all together because if we do if and when we do raise the rates they should, they should be done together it should just it should. You know, we do it on based on inflation I, yeah people will be upset that inflation is we're all paying more we're all for everything right. you know it's just how it is right. water and that's less than inflation yes Okay, any any other questions or comments? Personally you mentioned he might even need a tractor. Can I hear that? Yeah, well then it's by your plan, uh, it is for two thousand twenty. Or if we go on ten years. Yeah. Technically the hours on the tractor don't warrant purchasing a new one, but the amount of problems we've had in that day. Tractor. Yeah. Which is why we set up the equipment reserve yeah, in right. the beginning was so that, and put that money in there was because yeah. we knew that we would need that tractor. And the sooner we do it, the more we obviously get out of it and trade yeah. as well. Okay, and did we talk to the company about this lemon? Yes. And yeah. what did they I say? I asked them as nicely as I could if we could get some type of forgiveness for this next bill because it's been down there like six times. And the best they could offer me, I took it was to bring the tractor back for us. <laughs> so we didn't pay it again to go pick it up. That's, that's the best right. I could do. I did ask. Um, that's right. Plus. But it was a completely different issue. <laughs> so I can't see why they wouldn't just like give us some labor for free. Basically what happened this time was a connector to the uh, diesel pump, the injector pump, uh, was on one strand of wire left, so they had one order of the pipes. We've replaced the... Don't they have lemon laws for tractors? Unfortunately, no, but I think we got to go with it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll put that thing as wrong as we have to. I just... I'm yep. hoping we have no problem. Okay. <laughs> so just so, just so we're clear, uh, your recommendations are a three percent increase in base rate per year, additional seven fifty. I know you put five, five but it'll be seven fifty k project cost using twenty percent of the uh, fund balance to do that with the remainder coming from the capital fund, the balance on the capital fund to cover twenty percent uh and that would include the generator. Yeah. Okay. If we took the generator out, we could go to the five We still need well, to find a generator. No, I agree. It's so not, even if we do get stuff right. Bag, um, so even if even if we do uh, get this, you know, maybe you know. Yeah, it's all we can still apply. Right. Well, we still need it. We have. Have a grant out. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what we're saying. You may not get another one. Yeah. No. So that's that's what we're saying. So. The I and I work though. I would maybe prioritize the generator over the I and I work if you guys are thinking along those. No, lines. we're not gonna. I. I'm just saying because the I and I work, there are grants available. Well, I think we should still apply for those grants. To do the remaining. Yes. But the twenty manholes. Are the worst. The 20 manholes that I have here are all of the manholes along the lake that are continuously leaking okay. water. Okay. 
And um, uh, Charlie Brown and the Wiener Boy. Okay. Uh, they're pretty bad. Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Lauren. We did it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, I think I might. I think I might jump in at, at this point just to give us a little heads up. Uh, Rebecca and I traveled to the uh, listening tour up in uh, Saranac Lake. A little disappointing that the governor was supposed to be there. She wasn't. Um, Commissioner uh, Bezos was there, and uh, a few other uh, directors who spoke but did not take any questions. And so we were relegated to ask the people manning tables at the back. The bottom line is. We ended up at the uh, environmental justice table of all things. And so we are not a, uh, a distressed area, disadvantaged, right, disadvantaged area, which 40% of these grant monies are going to go to. However, in speaking with the environmental justice woman, she did say we may be able to get in the door through that. The only problem is they know nothing about Hamilton County, right? So they didn't know the size. They didn't know the number of people. They didn't know our tourism economy. They didn't know that we were the only ones in the Adirondacks, you know, fully in the Adirondacks. They didn't know that 80% are second homeowners. They didn't know the majority are over 60. So our birth weights, you know, are normal. And that's one of the, the factors that they put in for the disadvantaged uh, community. The same as when we applied for loans in our... Well, exactly. So, so what these people do that what that department does is it then it takes into consideration all those things that don't fit neatly into their formula, and in essence, they advocate for us. So, um, what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, send a note and talk to Brian Wells to see if the county as a whole can provide that information there, so that the county as a whole can be in a better position for, um, for grants and, and take advantage of those clean air, clean water uh, actions. And then in addition, provide information on speculators specifically to them so that they can advocate for us as well. So The project that we have applied for, possibly for the extensions for sewer, any information in regards to the lakes in the area? Um, is more than welcome because mm -hmm. it would help with any very Yeah, lake, lake, uh, lake in particular. Uh, well, LPSA will have information on the lakes and the growth and the nutrients. So, and that like information, that. if we do get the PG grant, will be helpful for revenue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, Mark, who should they, who should they contact? Is that Dan Wilt or is that... Um, what is he looking for exactly? So information, any water quality information. Peter Tobiason or Jim Olson? Okay, I have Jim Olson and Peter Tobiason's uh, information that they I don't need. Yeah, yeah, but they're if gonna, you find me. They're going to actually start doing phosphorus samples um, on the streams coming in to help determine what's actually going on. And that'll be important information. Good. Okay. Great. If there are no more questions for Ed, thank you. Thank Have you. a good night. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It's nice to see you. A lot to do, wasn't it? The workout for Oh, Grandma, thank you. Yes, thank you, Grandma. Okay. Um, clerk Treasurer, yes. Great. Um, Frontier has set up a static IP address for the Village Hall, and ABS has been working on configuring the cameras. We will be working with Intrabid. Um, they have to come up and do um, some technical stuff with the with the cameras in all the buildings, and then ABS will be able to finish um, syncing them so that they can come here to the office. Um, I'm hoping we'll have that done for the next one. That's my plan. Anyway, um, I will also, I also have the contact for the fire department cameras because that those have been an issue too. They've been locked out of the box for a while. Um, so I've been, um, I got a message to him and I'll be trying to get a hold of him to work on 
getting those set up. If you can't get that, like, figure it out. Um, the guy from Interbid, um, he said that he has a folder box. Because um, there, there's a locally store, a locally stored um, feed. So for the camera, their camera system. So he has an older box that we could um, have for that um, to try to work with those cameras. So we can we have a couple of options there. Um, the ad for the deputy clerk position has been added to the website and will be in the paper um, for three weeks starting this Wednesday. Um, the two weeks of clerk school, which I know kind of feels like a long way. Away, back from right now, but <laughs> almost a month ago, but um, they were, that was packed with very interesting sections, including one about conflict, ethics, performance management, the clerk's role in emergency management, critical decision-making principles of administration, situationally, situational leadership, and many, many more. Um, it was four days in person, all day sessions, and then four days, one session each online. So, um, the sessions also had great interactive discussions, um, specifically the ones that were in person. Um, there's always great discussion with those. Um, there was a presentation. There was a, there was a presentation review first, like on presentation skills, and then we also do a presentation, and then we had to all review each other. <laughs> That was not fun, <laughs> but um, it did help to um, kind of get us all to like think about what we need to work on to better our presentation skills. Um, um, and then I have a final report that needs to be submitted um, at the end of next week. And then I was going to go into further detail about this meeting that already been too long, so um, if anybody else Anytime they want. 
what I can see history is dating back to whenever the data goes. Yeah, the data goes. Yeah. Um, it does allow you to do a lot, a lot of different analyses. Right. Right. Anybody, if any of the other board members would like to see a demo, um, I can set that up on uh, Jason. He's really good about, mm -hmm. um, you know, his flexibility with time and stuff. And I th and I think alarms can be alarms can be set can for set something that well. might be a high like for where we might see a high reading. And down the road, when we can, if we can ever get a little bit more interactive with it, we can read like we can read a couple times a month on somebody if we suspect a. You know, if we suspect the least, we can read very easily on that once a week or once every other day, and I could it would pop up right away showing which what um what those readings are. So, so just a, a quick question: How long does it take to read the meters right now? When they do the whole village, mm -hmm. it takes probably like an hour and a half, two hours. So what we may what we may want to do just a, a thought, is that even if we did a section of the village each month, you know, so that each, so overall everybody gets read through this, through this. not billing, right. but just to see if well, there are like reads. Just for the system to read, for right. me to um, take the readings that I've done. No, no, I understand that, but, it, but right now we do that once a quarter. So in order to determine if there are leaks, because so many of our homes are second homeowners, even if we got into the habit of reading the entire village every month, even though we bill every quarter, at least that might give right. us a little bit more of a heads up. Yeah, on an early kind of four days. Right. Um, which this allows a lot easier than, than the um, past. Than what they do right now. So. Right. So do you have to... You could physically look at that, and, or are there reports that tell you? Um, it comes you up. can. There are reports you can set up, like Chad said, you can set up alerts. So we could set up an alert in the system that will send either me or Ed or both of us a message saying that, or an email saying that, um, you know, check out this check account. out this account or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of different features, but okay. that we don't currently get. Yeah. Um, it's a real safe Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I I mean I think it'll be a good upgrade. Um, and meter reading right now is just driving through the right. village. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. So it's radio radio reading. Yeah. And when would we have to purchase? Um. Well, preferably sooner rather than later. I've been putting off even doing this last update, and um. I mean, ideally, I'd like it seen, like to see it like purchased and installed before the next reading, before the which next is, early reading, yeah. which is October thirty first. Okay. Um, just because, like I said, I've been putting off even updating. Like I've got an update sitting there on my computer, and I've been not doing it. <laughs> so uh, just because I'm like, well, I don't want to mess that up yet. Well, even if. By October first, or something. Yeah. Okay. October first. By October first, 